all right, I've decided I'm just going to talk to you a little bit. Is that all right? Yes, sir. I'm going to change course. Is that all right? Yes, sir. You know, the lulav, be seated. The lulav, the waving, if you will, of the lulav was practiced every year at tabernacles. They would take an implement. It had four different kinds of branches in it, each one symbolizing something different. And at the third feast season of the year, tabernacles, in the fall of the year, at the beginning of the year, what? Passover. Even though you've got those masks on, I can, I can believe God you got it right. Hello, Elkhart. We love you so much. Pastor Nate, Miss Carly, we bless you. We thank God for everybody there. What a time they had last week, and so did we. But at the beginning of the year, Passover. Y'all can be seated. You don't have to hang with me. Passover, I'm, I'm not going to be here long, uh, uh, which, you know, two or three hours. But <laughs> Hey, look, you couldn't even get in this room for 22 weeks. Why don't you just get up and give God praise that you're here, that you're there. If you're in your home right now, give God a great, 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 great praise. Yeah, thank him that you're here not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together. One of my great pastor friends in California, he, he, he just couldn't take it anymore, you know, because in California, out there on the left coast, a lot of them so far left, they fell off. Anyway, uh, he, he's got a wonderful church out there, and they still have a rule in place, no more than 10 people, and also no singing. Now, you can go to a riot, I mean a protest, her preachers that's what's dangerous to America I thought I was in the right church I might have to move I don't know so <laughs> they, they of course they're not allowed to have church right and even if there are ten of them together at church they're not allowed to sing no singing the devil's always hated worship. I, okay, I'm glad I'm just talking today. I said, the devil has always hated your worship more than anything else. He would rather you witness than worship. He would rather you give a thousand dollar seed this morning than worship. He would rather you read your Bible than worship. He can't, do you know why? Your Bible said Jesus came to do two things, seek and save, watch, that which was lost. And I mean, I'm a Baptist and, and my whole life we preach that, uh, I preached it for about 30 years. I got off of it about 13 years ago. But we always preached what that meant was Jesus came to seek and to save lost people. But that's not what it says. I don't know. I've been on a track here recently of telling you 
what it doesn't say. Like he never said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He never said that. Look, look at him. They're looking at me funny. I can tell who was here two weeks ago and who wasn't, you see. I can tell who was watching online. It's getting back about the fire aisle right there. But everybody else is looking at me like a calf staring at a new gate. He didn't say that. That's what he said if it was translated into, into Greek. But he didn't speak Greek. And, and he never said thee and thou one time. He didn't speak the king's English from 1611 either in your King James Bible. What he did speak was a street dialect of Aramaic. So what he said was Eli, Eli, Lamana, Shabaktinai, Shabaktani, Shabaktani. Eli, Eli, Lamanan, Shabachtani. What he said was, for this you have spared me. For this I was born. You kept me for this moment. I was born to die and live again. His father never forsook him. His father... If he had forsaken him, he could forsake you. But he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. So that, I told you I'm just gonna talk a little bit today. So, so there, in the beginning of the year, Passover, Passover. The children of Israel were in Egyptian bondage, but God raised up Pastor Moses. Now, Pastor Moses, if you study the books of the Pentateuch, if you study the first five books of the Bible, the books of Moses, if you study Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteron, Deuteronomy, that was the 50s, you will learn that Pastor Moses was of stammering lips. So, so when he went to Pharaoh, he, he had to say, you better let my... You better let him go. He just, he couldn't get through it, you understand. So Pastor Moses developed his own topos, his own position of opportunity, you see, his own way of ministering. And so Pastor Moses took to pastoring with trumpets. One trumpet blast meant a thing. Two trumpet blasts mean another thing. A long trumpet blast, then a short one, then a long one was Pastor Moses' Morris code for everybody get to the tabernacle. Do you understand? So he pastored with trumpets. So at the beginning of the year, there is Passover. The children of Israel at this point have been, watch me, all you beautiful mask-wearing people. Right? They were sequestered in their homes. God said, now take a lamb, take a lamb for every house. Then he said, now if, if there aren't enough people in the house, to eat the whole lamb, y'all bring some other people in and share the lambs house to house. Do you know what he was saying? There will never be too many people for the lamb, but there may be more lamb than you can handle, so you better be ready to share some of your lamb. 
I dare you to look at somebody and through your mask say, I got more than enough. I got too much. I got overflow. I got double for my trouble. And you better watch out because mine's about to spill out all over you. Everybody that's got a cup you're lifting up, fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Sound like Benny Hinn. Come and feel this thirsting of, of my soul. A bread of thy heaven, feed me till I want no hush, just a whisper. Fill my cup. I lift it up and make me sing it again, Brock. Feel. See. You see. You see. People, people filling their cup up. Throw your cup away, man. Get you a bucket. Throw your bucket away. Get you a wheelbarrow. Throw your wheelbarrow away. Get you a wagon. Throw your wagon away. Get you a barn. Get ready to tear down your barns and build bigger barns. I wish I had a shouting church. Elkhart, shout for them. Show them what to do. Those of you online, get to shouting. Don't you dare just sit there and eat your donut in your pajamas. Shout! So, so there's Passover in the beginning of the year. And Pastor Moses told him, everybody stay in your house. Don't come out your house. Anybody heard that? Okay, three people. What planet do y'all live on? Have you heard, stay in your house, lock it down, shut it down, shelter in place. My problem is my shelter is every place. Because I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. I abide under the shadow of the Almighty, and I say of the Lord, you are my refuge, you are my fortress, you are my God, and in you will I trust. Surely you have delivered me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence and from the wasting disease. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost not made for fornication, not made for sickness, disease, pain, malady, malfunction, and infirmity. If you had a pain, it's gone now because I bound it on right road before I got into this property. He bore our sicknesses and, and diseases and he carried all of our pain. I can hear Elkhart shouting. I think Pastor Nate about to take a run over there. Sometimes when I get to talking, I think I'm just going to talk a minute and, and I'd have spent less time preaching probably. Listen to me now. So Passover is when? In the spring of the year. Three commanded feasts. Passover, Pentecost, Tabernacles. How many total feasts? Three feast seasons, seven total feasts. The first Passover season has three feasts, one of which is Passover. Then at Tabernacles, there are three feasts, one of which is Tabernacles or booths, when they were commanded to sequester. Do you know that according to God's word, you ought to shut yourself off 
at least one time every year. No telephone, no television. Well, I'll walk you through it when we get there. But in the beginning of the year, there's Passover. And then when the blood was applied, there's my cross. When the blood was applied, as they were sheltered in their homes. Why? Because there, watch me, parallel now, 2020, first Passover. They were told to stay in their homes. Why? Because death was coming through. But if Pentecost got in there somewhere, if they had applied the blood to the doorposts and the lintel, the death angel would just shove somebody on the shoulder and tell them, you got a passing through anointing. Shout, I got a passing through anointing. This came to pass. This too shall pass. The Lord Jesus in Luke chapter four had been sequestered. 40 days, 40 nights, he was in the mountain. Actually, your 1611 King James Bible says the wilderness. Well, I've been to the wilderness and it is a mountain. He was in the mountain being tested by the devil for 40 days and 40 nights. No one there with him. Three times he responded to Satan's accusation. It is written, it is written, it is written. Somebody just say, put a word on it. And all three times Satan had to bow his ugly head in humble submission. He cannot stand up to the word. He cannot. The debar of God. Now, Passover at the springtime, I got to hurry, Pesach, Passover. And then you move how many days? 50 days. How many days? 50 days. What's 40 plus 10? 50 days. And then the second feast season comes called Pentecost, 50, Pente, 50. 50 days after Passover is Pentecost. Now, Passover was fulfilled historically when Calvary. 50 days after Calvary, remember, Jesus showed himself alive to them for 40 days. Then he said, go tarry in Jerusalem and you will be endued with power from on high. So they went, they didn't have to wait long. It was the second Sunday. 10 days later, God zips over open heaven and pours over the sapphire seal of heaven's gate. The blessed Holy Ghost, are you glad for it? 50 days, 40 and 10. Hey God, shout if you love his word. I love it. So, so then you've got Pentecost. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all together. Wait a minute. Where were they? Sequestered in one house in Jerusalem. 
not just the upper room of the house. You see, I just love to kill sacred cows. I just love it. I love me a good steak of sacred cow. It doesn't say the Holy Spirit came and filled the upper room. That's what some preacher preached. It says, filled the house where they were sitting. What is that? I don't want God just filling my upper room, man. I need him everywhere. I need the Holy Ghost from my head to my toes. You liked that, didn't you, Dr. Lowe? That's all right, wasn't it? I'll try that on again sometime. So now Pentecost, there appeared from heaven a sound as of a rushing mighty wind filled the house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and sat upon every one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. Now those two events are only 40 plus 10, 50 days apart at the beginning of the year. Passover, Pesach, fulfilled at the cross. Hmm. 50 days later, Pentecost fulfilled on the day of Pentecost. But then, all the year goes by. All the rest of the spring, all the rest of summer, well into the fall. And in the fall of the year, a trumpet sounds. It's called the Feast of Trumpets, which is the first feast of the three feasts of the feast season called Tabernacles. And Tabernacles means y'all sequester and I'm going to come where you are. That's what God said, tabernacle. It's not just you sequestering, but it's who's moving in with you. I can't get no help in here. Before that, there are 10 days of awe, 10 days of repentance, 10 days of separating yourself, 10 days of fasting, 10 days of repenting and relinquishing and humbling yourself before God. Now then, the Feast of Tabernacles is separated by a long time from the Feast of Passover and Pentecost. Two fulfilled historically. The third in the fall of the year has never been fulfilled historically called tabernacles. Are you with me? How did I tell you that the feast of tabernacles in the fall of the year with a long space of time between Calvary and Pentecost, what is the first thing that happens? What's the first feast of the season of tabernacles? I just love to make you talk. <laughs> it's trumpets. Okay, now, fast forward. The 10 days of all that precede tabernacles is an outpouring and a demonstration of the death rattle of your enemy. There are more earthquakes during those 10 days than any other time in the year historically. There are more murders. There are more hurricanes. It seems like the world is literally coming unhinged. Why? Because the devil knows the scriptures better than churchgoers. I didn't say better than you, I said better than churchgoers. And your, your word says, he knows the scriptures and trembles. 
And if there's any time he trembles, it's during the 10 days of all. Because what he understands is your Bible says, of that day, the great day of the Lord, the coming of the Lord, the appearing of the Lord in the sky, before that day, he loses his mind because he knows one of two things, hold up two fingers, come on, put two fingers, use a little emoji, come on, put two fingers up, two, one of two things, wiggle up, one of two things is going to happen. One of two things. Number one, we don't know the day nor the hour. Neither does the Son of God know the day or the hour. But both of us who know God's Word know the season. Fall is a season. Winter is a season. Spring is a season. Summer is a season. Now, July the 4th is in the summer. December 25th at 1 o'clock in the afternoon is a specific time, but it's in a specific season. God did not say, God in fact emphatically said, I'm not going to tell you the day or the hour. But if you have eyes to see and ears to hear, I will show you the season. That season is tabernacles. That's why the 10 days of all, Lucifer and all of his agents are losing their minds. They're doing everything they can possibly do. They're like the media. Do anything to distract from the truth. Nope. Anything. I'm not going to go there. I am going to go there Wednesday night. I'll, I'll give you that heads up. When I talk about the man and the mark and the conditioning currently taking place for multiplied millions to swallow his words wholesale. I'll show it to you Wednesday night. Where was I? I'm just talking. I don't have any notes on this. The season is tabernacles. Tabernacles begins with the feast of trumpets. Now watch this. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. I would not have you to be misinformed, brethren, concerning those which are asleep. For we shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain. I may talk about this next Sunday morning. Do you know that there was a resurrection at the crucifixion? What? Who were the women at the cross when Jesus was crucified? I'm going to share that one with you too. Then I'm going to share with you the declaration of salvation by a sinner at Calvary. Truly, this was the Son of God. Oh, I, I got two messages on that ready for you right now. Uh, okay, are you with me so far? The dead in Christ shall rise first. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up into the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, you let me leave off the first part. 
the dead, the trump of God shall sound. The what? The what? The trump, the trumpet. The trumpet of God will sound. The dead in Christ will rise. We which are alive and remain shall be harpazo, rapture, snatched away like a thief in the night. Two washing dishes in Pickerington, one taken, one left. Two asleep in the bed in Elkhart, one taken. One, I'm quoting the Bible to you. So that trumpet signifies the beginning of the return of Christ, his appearing, not his second coming, his appearing in the air the rapture of the church. That begins tabernacles, historically. But I told you to hold up two fingers. The first one was what? The trumpet, Jesus appearing in the air. If that does not happen during the yearly cycle of tabernacles, God said, let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to one-up the devil. Because when he goes, God said, I better fix you. So he said, if I don't send my son, I'm going to send something else. I'm gonna send a double portion of seven different blessings into your life. Double portion. Anybody ready for double? Sit down, watch this. So let's go back to that first Passover. They are sequestered. At no time since the first Passover, when God released his children from the bondage of Egypt. And remember this, Dr. Lowe, remember, you dear, sweet, lovely people, remember that before they left Egypt, You want a mic? No. Um, I, I work alone. Anyway, I'm playing. I'm playing. Now, where was I? Huh? Why are you looking at me funny? You can't tell me. Doesn't do me any good to talk if you're not listening. Pull your mask down and somebody tell me. Not everybody, somebody. Where was I? I was in Egypt. Well, bless God, we better get out there. Before they left Egypt and headed to the promise, I need you to know God will give you a promise to go get your promise in. You believe in for a wife, he'll give you a new Mercedes to go pick up him. God said, there's no use for the cursed ones to have all this stuff. So you've been baking their bricks with which They've been gathering wealth, and you complained about it because you didn't know my word. Egyptians, modern Christians, well, look at what they've got, and they don't even serve God. Well, they out there working, gathering it up, because God said, before we leave here, there's going to be a great transfer and the wealth of the wicked is laid up for us I 
Christ said the wealth of the wicked is laid up for us, not in heaven, but before we leave here. So there they are, first Passover. Now Moses has gone up, watch this, not since the first Passover have, has the church in 187 nations been required to not attend church on Easter. I need to figure up exactly how many years that is. If our resident theologian was here, if you're watching Elder Canfield, type it in, somebody bring it to me. But it was a long time. We're talking out of Egypt, Passover, right? Moses goes up into the what mountain? There, God delivers to him the Decalogue. He engraves his commands, which are not optional and not flexible. Those of you who think you can support people who support abortion. That's called aiding and abetting murder. 60 million murders of the innocent, not the guilty. That flaming finger of the Holy Ghost, he engraves his word on tablets of stone. That's what he does for you and me. He takes the flaming finger of the Holy Ghost and engraves his word on the fleshly tablets of our heart. You are a walking, moving, breathing ark of the covenant. And wherever you go, Dagon falls. His hands get cut off. His head gets cut off just because you showed up. Because that word is in you. What word? That word of faith which we preach is nigh you, even in your heart and in your mouth. I just, I'm just trying to talk a little bit. That's all. I, I would if I could remember it. There, there they are sequestered in their homes. Moses, Moses gets up in the mountain. Up in the mountain, God gives him the Ten Commandments. He comes down out of the mountain and guess what he sees? Rioting. 3,000 people died while he's in that mountain. We're talking about the church folk. They are rioting. They are dancing nakedly. They are burning gold and beating it into an image of their likeness, of their liking. That hasn't happened from the first Passover till 2020. We were commanded to miss Easter, and immediately after Easter, the world blew up. Anarchy, rioting, don't have any police. Great, how's that working out for you? I'll tell you how it's working out a 147% increase in murder and violent crime since people started chanting that mantra. It, 
you, if, if that's what you want to hold to, make sure you don't ever call 911. Don't call it. Because somebody risking their life is on their way to help you. I don't care whether you applaud or not. I'm trying. So, all those thousands of years, and suddenly, in 2020, we have an exact replay of the first Passover. Wouldn't it be interesting if this was the year that at Tabernacles, those of us who are ready, well, I'm in church. Well, that doesn't mean you're ready. Well, I pay my taxes. Well, that doesn't mean you're ready. Well, they gave me too much money and change back and I took it back to them. That doesn't mean you're ready. There's only one God, one book, the Holy Bible that will get you to the promised land. His name is Jesus. And faith in him and him alone will put your name in the Lamb's Book of Life and get you ready for when the magnificent magnitude of his perfect person sweeps out from north to south and east to west like metal drawn to a magnet when the white hairs are growing black on the head of damnation, you're coming out of here. Rapture drill, one, two, three. Well, I don't believe in the rapture. Well, you can't read the Bible. And that's fine with me. I've already asked God for hang time about 50 feet off the ground so I can wave to you and say the sweetest I told you so ever uttered over mortal tongue. God said, I'm going to do seven things for you. You better get your pen. I see women reaching for their purses. I hope it's not for their lunch. <laughs> seven. If you want all seven, throw both hands up in the air and wave. You too. If you want all seven, if I was you, I'd type in there, all seven. A double portion of all seven of these are promised if Jesus does not come during tabernacle. What a season, man. We're headed there. Right now. I'd be getting your family in here next Sunday if I was you. I'd be sharing this with everybody I know on all social media platforms. I'd be texting everybody I know and telling them, do not miss what this man said today. Number one, Joel chapter two. I'm going to send you a double portion, former and latter rain, spring and fall. I'm gonna send it all together in one month. I'm going to send you a financial double portion blessing. What's the biggest financial blessing you've ever received? Get it in your heart. If you don't know it, God help you. If you don't know the greatest financial blessing God's ever given you, think about it this afternoon and write it down somewhere, and then beside it write times two. And get ready. But it's COVID. And 
That's like saying, but it was raining when God sent a whale to swallow up Jonah. Your surrounding has nothing to do with God's word. Seven blessings. What is number one? A double portion of the financial anointing. It's just amazing the resistance you get. Well, I've lost my job. Well, according to God's word, you're going to get a double better one. Well, yeah, but the forecast, the forecast, I told you Wednesday night how far off the authorities are in their forecast. Remember at the beginning of this thing in March? Nobody wear a mask. Masks are bad, bad, bad mask, bad, bad. You're going to smother on your own oxygen. Now what they tell you? Not allowed to go outside unless you got one on. What, are you trying to kill me? Or are you trying to help me? Can't figure it out. Don't miss Wednesdays. Number two. Number two. Let me go ahead and jump to number three and I'll come back to number two. Number three, restoration. I will restore to you the years the locusts have eaten. Joel 2.25. Number four, I will give you a double portion of miracles. Joel 2.26. Miracles. First of all, you should get my series on miracles and know what a miracle is. A miracle is not the suspension of natural law. God doesn't have anything to do with natural law. It's just God being God. That's all. Number five, divine presence. Tabernacles. God said, I'm going to come and I'm going to visit you. I'm going to come and I'm going to visit you. I'm going to come and visit you. I'm going to come and visit you. I am going to come and visit you. What's number six? What's number seven? No, number six is I'm going to pour out a double portion blessing on every member of your family. So if you have somebody that's not born again, I need you to jump up and start screaming their name right now and let's believe God together that during tabernacles they're going to get born again. Number seven, deliverance and freedom. Somebody in your family living an ungodly lifestyle, get ready. Somebody in your family bound by addiction, get ready. Opioid overdoses since March are up 40%. Suicides are up 60%. Shout, I'm going to get a financial blessing. My family's going to get back. Come on. You got them there. Read them off. Double portion is number one. Financial blessing is number two. Say, I am either raptured or 
I get a double portion of all seven. Now between now and the Feast of Trumpets, if you'll go over those every day, at least once a day, and speak them before God, remind him of the promises he's made to you, they're on their way to your house. If you believe it, give him praise and give him glory. God has been speaking to me over the last three weeks from Genesis 42, 42, 42, 2. There is grain in Egypt. There is grain in Egypt. Egypt at that time was the enemy of the, of the Jewish people. So God was saying to the Jewish people, there is a supply for you that you don't know anything about. In essence, it's being held in the storehouses of your enemy. But God said, I've done something. I've sent Jacob's son, Joseph, who they thought was dead. He's now the second in command in all of Egypt. And he is in charge of the storehouses of wealth. Sounds like Jesus, doesn't it? Listen to this. God, God spoke this to me. 1 Kings 17, 4. If men refuse to feed you, the ravens will. Yeah, you don't believe it. You don't believe it. If I'm God, I'm sitting up there and like, you don't believe it. If men refuse to feed you, you lose your job because of COVID-19. Ravens will feed you. Don't you dare limit God. I don't care what's, that's like being told you have cancer and just throwing up your hands and saying, well, guess I'll die. Well, I lost my job. Well, guess I'll go broke. No, 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 no. Jesus is still sitting in heaven with heaven's supply that he's in control of, and you have the ability now to direct divine activity into your life. Secondly, Exodus 16, 15. If the earth will not yield her grain... <laughs> Heaven will drop down manna. We are right now, I've always wanted to do this. We are right now surrounded with favor as a shield. In front of, behind, above, beneath, to the right and to the left, we are surrounded with favor and favor will make the source of your distress the channel of your deliverance oh my great god if you've got sickness in your body do something with your body to let the sickness know it can't stay in your body and if you've got problems in your home do something in your home to let the devil know you're not surrendering and if you got problems in your finances, do something with your finances that goes in the face of the devil and tells him, I trust God. <laughs> 